UFC Vegas 89. These are the full card predictions and the betting breakdown on the road edition of the show coming at you guys. We'll be back in studio this Saturday. Don't worry. Make sure you all smash the likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notifications on and make sure to share the video as well. And also note, I'll be back Saturday. Fight companion going down Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Do not miss it. And let's get into the first fight on the card. We have Mohamed Uzman versus Mick Parkin. I'm going to go with Mohamed Uzman to win this fight. I see him as a lot more of a physically imposing threat to Mick Parkin. Parkin's a good peppering striker. He does do decent work inside of the clinch, and he landed some takedowns in his last fight out. It was against uh, Kyle Machado, but he hasn't taken on somebody in the UFC with the physical strength and presence of Mohamed Usman. Even though Usman hasn't been getting knockouts in the past couple, he is a guy that has some power, definitely has a strong chin on him. Physical specimen, solid wrestling. I see this fight at the apex taking place a lot inside of the clinch. I think Usman is going to back parking up, garner some control time, and end up taking it on the scorecard. So I'm going with Mohamed Usman to win against Mick Parkin and take that O from him. Ain't no Mick Parkin. Like, I always try to have high expectations on him and expect better and better performances, but I've been underwhelmed. I think he's a decent guy. He's kind of like the hunchback of Notre Dame, the way that he stands. And I think that Mohamed Usman is just a much superior athlete in a tricky stylistic matchup. So we're going to go with Mo Usman, the motor, to get it done. Usman's a slight underdog, plus 120. Parkin at minus 140. They got the over 2.5 at minus 180. I was hoping to see an over 1.5 at minus 180 because that would have been intriguing. I think we're probably going later. Two big dudes, heavyweights, guys that are comfortable in the clinch. I think Mo Usman wins the clinch battle. Might land some key takedowns. Could be a bit of a snooze fest to start the night, but I'm going with Mo Usman to get it win in uh, heavyweight division, getting it going. Let's go. Next fight on the card, we got Igor Severino versus Andre Lima. It's actually also Igor Da Silva, if you're seeing that, because uh, depending where you go, they got different names for him. I'm going to be going with Lima to win. He's got a good style. He seems very technically sound with the stand-up. Both guys are winners on Dana White's Contender Series. I got to like the Lima side because of the five-year age advantage. Granted, you know, one less pro fight than uh, Severino Da Silva. But he does have a striking background as a professional. I think Lima is more technically polished in the stand-up. I think he's more precise. Severino can get a bit wild with his hands, but it does lead him to some impressive shots being landed over the top. He got that nice knockout of Joe Anata Silva on the Contender Series. Both guys are Contender Series winners. So I like the matchup of prospects right out the gate, being faced up with one another. Flyweight division, which is honestly a wide open weight class with Steve Urseg fighting for the belt, who was ranked like number 10. I'm going to go with Lima. I'm going to say he takes it on the scorecards. I think that he's just technically superior. I like his game. I don't know. He kind of gives me like Anderson Silva vibes. At least he looks like him just a little bit. It looks like that could be Silva's uh, bastard son or something like that. The Silva is plus 145, Lima minus 170. Flyweight fight, even though we got two strikers, I think we're going longer. And we got over one and a half. I think we're going over one and a half for sure here. Minus 260. Give me that over one and a half. I would say... Severino Da Silva was more impressive on Contender Series, but Johanna Da Silva 8-1. For Lima beating Rickson Zenedim, who was 14-1 and was coming into the show, I think, with a bit of hype on him. I mean, a 14-1 and record is absolutely sick on Contender Series. I like what I'm seeing from the, uh, the Lima side. We're going with him to get the win. Lima to win a decision and uh, interesting battle of prospects here. Next fight on the card, we have Montserrat Rendon versus Daria Zelenzikova. I'm going with Zelenzikova to get the win. I think she might knock Montserrat Rendon out. Debut for Rendon, she did beat Tamaris Vidal, timed some key takedowns in the fight, but like, let's be honest, her striking is kind of shit. 
She's throwing shots from outside of range and missing a lot. She doesn't have great precision and accuracy. Daria on the opposite side, Russian Savage. Very good stand-up game. Her only loss is to Melissa Dixon, and she was busting Dixon up on the feet. Dixon beat Alexeva in her debut. And even though Zelenikova got passed into mount and pounded a bit, I think the stoppage was early. There was only a couple seconds left in that first round. You could say, though, it's a red flag in the grappling game if you're getting past the mountain pounded out like that. I just am not super high on Montserrat Rendon having the ability to consistently get Zelenikova there. I like Zelenikova's stand-up a lot. I could be really getting swayed by smooth striking because Rendon's stand-up is like a D-, minus, and Zelenikova for women's MMA, like... She's towards that A category. She's very smooth with her punches. She moves exceptionally well. If she can stay off of her back, she can get the win. Rendon's also 35. I gotta go Zelenikova. I think that she'll be able to fend off the grappling attacks of Rendon for the most part. And if Rendon does end up on top, I'm hoping to see some improvements from Zelenikova on her back. And I'm going to have some faith that the improvements are made. And I'm saying she gets an impressive win. I'm going with the emphatic striker. I love the style. It's enjoyable to watch. She's, she's significantly better. But I'll be honest, though. Last time out, this Maria Lusau fight, she fought an absolute can. That girl was throwing chicken wing punches. And honestly, I don't think she's winning against a lot of amateur fighters. I don't know. Five and three, that blew my mind that she was five and three. So Zelena Kova's a little bit of a risk, right, because of the question marks around the grappling. But she did beat UFC vet Liana Jojua. I'm going to go Zelena Kova to win. I'm not telling you go throw down with this one, though. Minus 180 for Zelena Kova. Rendon plus 155. I can see why people are intrigued by the underdog spot because if Rendon can land takedowns, she can find success. And she's going to be looking to catch kicks. That's something I noticed a lot about Rendon is she reaches for the low kicks. A very talented striker could throw a question mark kick up there and catch her with a head kick to the face. I'm going with Zelena Kova to be the one to beat her. I'm picking her to win. She's got the capabilities to win by KO, but it's going to be a decision probably. I expect her to fend off the takedowns from Rendon. I think she's going to be touching her up with good shots, busting her up a bit, causing Rendon to be a little bit hesitant on takedown attacks. Rendon, she beat Tamaris Vidal in the debut in a snooze fest decision. Yeah, Zelena Kova for the W. We're going with Russia. Next fight on the card, we got Steven Nguyen versus Jerno Ahrens. I'm picking Steven Nguyen. Jerno Ahrens... He lacks head movement completely. He has okay striking. In both of his UFC fights, he's rocked his opponents. He dropped Sung Woo Choi. He hurt William Gomez with a shot. Steven Nguyen, though, he's pretty crisp with his stand-up game. He destroyed AJ Cunningham on Dana White's Contender Series. Obviously, I know Cunningham then got destroyed by Ludovic Klein, but Nguyen did it first. He fought on Contender Series years ago against Elon Cruz. His past four fights... Three of them are contender series fights. So he had back-to-back -back contender series wins, which eventually garnered him the contract. And I think that he has polished his game up pretty nicely. I think the stand-up is smooth. He's defensively sound. Even in his loss to Elon Cruz, I'm not going to call it a fluke, but a jump knee to the chin with a few seconds left in the fight, it is what it is. I thought he was looking pretty good. I think that Jerno Aarons is eh, and I feel like Steven Nguyen can touch him up with a lot of shots on the feet. I think he's got to be prepared to go long because Aaron's has shown no deficiencies in durability, but he is pretty hittable. He is stiff right in the center line. And I think Nguyen can make him pay a lot in this fight. Expect some jabs, expect a patient approach. I'm thinking that Nguyen technically outpoints Aaron's in a good striking matchup. We're going Steven Nguyen to get it done. Probably decision here. Minus 185 for Steven Nguyen. Jerno Aaron's plus 160 as the underdog. Let's see if we got an over line looking any bit interesting. Over two and a half, minus 200. Probably in over two and a half here. I'm going to go with the side of uh, Nguyen. Jerno Aaron's from Holland, but like the stand-up game that he's bringing from the Netherlands is not overly impressive to me. I just feel like he's a little bit too stiff for my liking, and I think Steven Nguyen's coming together. Impressive on the Contender Series last time out, and he's got a lot of experience on Contender Series, man. One of the most experienced Contender Series fights ever. I'm going with uh, Nguyen to get it done. Let's keep running up. 
Next fight on the card, we got Miles Johns, Cody Gibson. Okay, this one is a little bit weird because Miles Johns took this fight on very short notice. If this fight was scheduled with a full camp, I would anticipate Miles Johns to be more than a three to one favorite. He also tested positive for steroids, okay? He was taking that Tarina ball, the John Jones special. They got the same supplier. I think that Miles Johns can still win. I'm gonna go out and pick Miles Johns because I just think he's better than Cody Gibson. I think he can land takedowns. I think he can close the gap. Short, stocky frame with good wrestling. This style gives Cody Gibson some difficulty. My worry comes down to Miles John stepping on a short notice with gas tank issues. But how I'm thinking here is, I don't think Miles Johns is trying to throw his career down the toilet by taking a short notice fight that he isn't ready for. I'm going to anticipate that Miles Johns, even on short notice, is coming in in very good shape and going to be prepared for three hard rounds. Because Cody Gibson's not an easy guy to put away. I think Miles Johns can land takedowns. I do think he's the heavier puncher. Gibson does have the length advantage, big reach edge, five inches. But I think Johns is going to get in his face. I think Johns is going to land some takedowns. I think he can land some big punches too. I like Miles Johns' wrestling. I mean, he was dominating Dan Argetta, and he got the win, even though it was a no contest. Fight before that, he got a W over Vince Morales, who was a good striker and long. John Castaneda lost, which, unfortunate, looking at it now. But Miles Johns is still good, man. 13-2, one no contest. I think he's solid. And we also got Cody Gibson, who's a 36-year-old bantamweight. He came back. He fought hard on the Ultimate Fighter. But I think Miles Johns is a bit too much for him. Lost to Brad Katona last time out. He lost to Ray Borg, too, who's short and stocky, kind of similar to Miles Johns. I'm going to go Miles Johns to get a hard-fought win here on short notice. Let's hope the gas tank is looking smooth. Minus 128, Johns. Plus 108, Cody Gibson. Over 2.5, minus 210. The reason the over worries me a bit is John's taking it on short notice. The line is pretty much even, but like I said earlier, if this fight was on a full camp, I think Miles Johns is a very big favorite. I don't think these lines are even. So if Miles Johns is in very good shape, he could win. Now then there's the second concern. How much is he going to be impacted without the steroids? I know we could say, oh, but he probably wasn't actually taking them. It was just a mismark by USADA, maybe. But maybe that USADA's gone, he's back on him. So I'm going to pick Miles Johns to get the win. I think he can pull it off. I like Miles Johns. Now I'm very suspicious, though, about him losing his hair. Because he had that money hairline. Next thing you know, he's popping some, uh, some steroids in, and now he's bald all of a sudden. I'm going Miles Johns. Next fight on the card is Hikardo Hamosh versus Julian Arosa. I'm going to pick Ricardo Hamos to knock Julian Arosa out. Arosa's gotten chinned in his past two fights. Badly knocked out by Padilla last time. Fight before that, Alex Caceres chinned him. He had a nice little streak going for himself, right? And, like, there's been good Ws. Hakeem Dawidu win is solid. Beating Steven Peterson, he looked like trash in that fight and barely beat him. And then Charles Jordan, he was able to submit. Look at that. Last time out, Charles Jordan submitted... Ricardo Hamosh. The reason I'm picking Ricardo Hamosh is because for me, he's got that Charles Oliveira vibe. I felt like even watching earlier fights, like even losing to Lerone Murphy, I always felt like Hamosh had this certain special look of potential, but he's been very win-loss, win-loss, right? You look, the loss to Lerone Murphy, then he beats Bill Algio, and honestly, that win is aged immaculately. Holy shit. Lost to Tahugov, who's no longer with the promotion. Beat Danny Chavez, no longer with the promotion. And then Charles Jordan subbed him. The reason he got subbed by Charles Jordan is he's leaving his neck out. Ricardo Hamosh, he does dumb stuff. For whatever reason, he like lacks fight IQ. I remember when he was throwing this weird behind the lead leg back low kick, which made zero sense to him. Like, bro, just don't throw it. Like, there's no purpose for that kick. It's flashy, but it doesn't do any damage, and it puts yourself in a vulnerable spot. Julian Arosa on the other side fights with his hands literally down. Ricardo Hamos should win this thing. I'm going Hamos by KO. I'm believing in my guy. I'm a fan of Ricardo Hamos, and I'm going to pick him to beat Julian Arosa here. But we know that Arosa has some good wins and upsets, right? He beat Sean Woodson. He beat Charles Jordan. There's moments for Julian Arosa. Plus 140 as the dog, Arosa. He's a scrappy underdog all the time. Minus 160 for Hamos. Not the betting spot that I'm crazy about. Because Ricardo Hamos is a fight IQ risk. But the potential on this dude, to me, looks excellent. Hamos, getting it done is my call. I'm going to say a knockout. What do we got? Under what? 
under two and a half, minus 155. I do think it's going under. I'm going to pick a KO. I think there's a finish. I like under two and a half. I like win. Ricardo Hamosh, I'm calling a knockout. I expect him to live up to some potential here as he continues to develop into a solid prospect. Maybe my expectations are too high, but I think that he could eventually work his way close to top 15. I think the dude's got potential. I like Hamosh a lot. Next fight on the card, our featured prelim is Trey Ogden versus Kurt Holoba. I sat on this one for a bit. I'm going to pick Kurt Holoba. And he's an underdog, too. I think he's got the better jiu-jitsu than Trey Ogden. He's got a lot of wins by submission. He's not an easy guy to tap out either. He got submitted once. It was against, what, Shane Burgos armbar years ago. Kurt Holoba just fought through the ringer of hell on the ultimate fighter. And I'll be damned if he loses his next fight after winning the show to Trey Ogden, who dropped the decision to Jordan Levitt. But I already hear some comments. Bro, he beat Daniel Zell Huber. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that happened. It doesn't make any sense to me. Trey Ogden should lose to Daniel Zell Huber nine times out of ten, but the fight game is crazy. Last time out, Ogden was dominating Nicholas Moda. Let's be honest, but it's Nicholas Moda, bro. His grappling is mid. Kurt Holobot can wrestle. Kurt Holobot can scrap on the feet. And Kurt Holobot has very good jujitsu. He won against Austin Hubbard by triangle choke. And he has good transitions with his submissions. I like Kurt Holobot. He's been in the game a long time. I remember the Pat Healy fight years ago. And I've always thought he was a scrappy dude with potential. I mean, he's now 37. So it's like, bro, potential. He's past that point. Fair. Trey Ogden's a decent fighter. These guys are similar as far as where they're at in their careers, but I'm going to have faith in the momentum from winning the Ultimate Fighter, and I think the late career resurgence is real here for Kurt Holoba. I'm going to pick him to beat Trey Ogden. I think he's going to submit Trey. Trey has been submitted multiple times. He's been caught in some chokes, and I think Kurt Holoba could potentially strangle him. I'm going Holoba for the W. As far as the odds, Kurt Holoba plus 130 is the dog, and then it's minus 150 for Trey Ogden on the other side. Under two and a half plus 130, interesting. I mean, if Holobos to win, he can get the finish. If Ogden does win, it's probably distance type fight. And it wouldn't blow my mind if they went all three rounds. But Holobos is the type of guy that he forces fights to be bangers. And I like that style. I want to see him force Ogden into a scrap. And I think that he can catch Ogden slipping. And I think he can finish him by submission. Kurt Holobos for the win as an underdog in the feature prelim. Next fight on the card, our main card opener. If you guys haven't yet, smash the likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We got Luis Poelo versus Fernando Padilla. I am going to guess that this is going to be fight of the night. I think these guys are going to be banging because the way Poelo fights is crazy and Padilla likes to strike too, and he's a very good striker. I'm picking Padilla to win a war of a decision where he is going to be caught by big punches, but he's going to be able to weather the storm. Padilla does have a good chin on him. Hasn't been knocked out as a pro. I believe he hasn't. We'll double check, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure. Yes, never knocked out before. He has gone distance before. Poello, seven KO wins, one win by decision. The way that Poello fights is forward pressure and dynamite shots. The dude is a scrapper, and he rips to the body decently too. Padilla's coming in with a big reach advantage. He's the taller guy as well. I think Padilla has the technical striking edge. He's going to have to deal with the craziness of Puello, but I think Padilla's going to have the technical tools to deal with such a thing. Now, I feel like Puello's got a good chin on him, and I don't think Padilla has the hardest punch. I know he did drop Julian Arosa, so he could land a big shot on the chin of Poello, but I just feel like we're going three rounds. I feel like we have a banger scrap between these two guys in a fight of the night type matchup, and I think I'm going with Mexico over Peru. I'm going with Padilla to get the win. I don't think, I know. I'm riding with Padilla to win this fight. I'm taking him by a decision and a good war. I like Fernando Padilla. I picked him as a dog against Julian Arosa some time ago now, and that you know was a beautiful win. I know last time out, Kyle Nelson did get him. Fair play to Nelson. But uh, different matchup here. Puello is a guy that comes forward and bangs, and he throws kind of reckless abandon. And I think Padilla can deal with that well. As far as the odds, Puello plus 160, Padilla minus 185. I got Padilla to pull it off. Let's see what the over's at. Do we got an over? Over one and a half, minus 190. 
I think we're going over one and a half. I think we're going to the later stages. I think both guys got good chins. Both guys are tough. But still, Padilla is the pick straight up. Like, the betting, the over-under here, you're playing with fire because of the way Poello fights. And it's not like he couldn't walk into a huge shot. But he hasn't really shown to be uh, a chinny guy as of yet. Winner on Contender Series, destroyed Robbie Ring. Absolutely destroyed him. Poello's tough. And this is going to be a really fun fight. I like Padilla to pull it off, and I'm very excited to see these two throw down. This is a great main card opener. Sleeper fight of the card. Next fight on the card, Billy Corintillo versus Yusuf Zalal. Mm, I'm going to pick Billy Q. I almost went the side of Yusuf Zalal. I had some subscribers in the live stream last week talking about Zalal and his striking game and the fact he went long with Ilya Taporia, but I'm like, bro, it was a debuting Taporia. I think Billy Q is going to land takedowns. We haven't seen proof that Zalal is going to be able to keep Billy Q off of him. Add in another factor for you guys. We are in the small cage. The apex is going to favor the smothering style of Billy Q as opposed to the technical kickboxing from the outside of uses for Zalal. And like, I know Zalal is riding a nice three-fight win streak outside of the UFC. But can we dig into it for a moment, bro? Last fight... He fought a guy making his MMA debut. That doesn't make sense to me. Fight before that, 9-3. and three. Okay, fight before that, 6-2. and two. Billy Q has been in the UFC for a very long time. He's a veteran of the game. He's coming off of a nice win over Damon Jackson, who's tough as hell. Lost to Edson Barboza, a top contender, right? Win over Alexander Hernandez, who was fighting at lightweight and beat Jim Miller. I know Jim Miller, you know, might be past his best days age-wise, but absolute savage, and he beat up. Hernandez, he did knock him out. It was a good scrap, though. There was moments for both. Shane Burgos lost in an absolute war where he looked great. And then he beat up Gabe Benitez. I'm going Billy Q. I think Billy Q is going to put a pace on Zalal. I think he can land takedowns. I think there is a possibility that Billy Q locks up a sub on the floor because he is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Yusuf Zalal is good. He's 27, though, and he hasn't proven to me he can win at a high level. And Billy Q is a tricky veteran to deal with, man. And I know there's been a lot of win-loss, win-losses for Billy Q. But this matchup here, I think it's favorable. Originally, he was supposed to fight, I believe, Francisco Miranda. Let's double-check it, but I'm 99% sure. It was Gabriel Miranda. Excuse me, not Francisco Miranda. He was supposed to fight Gabriel Miranda, and now he's getting Yusuf Zalal. I think this is just a winnable fight for Billy Q. Short notice guy, Yusuf Zalal. Good prospect, 27 years old with UFC experience, but not doing well in the UFC. He got canned from the UFC after a draw against Damon Blackshear, down a weight class. Blackshear is solid, but he's a 35er. Billy Q is going to be hard to deal with. I think he imposes his will, and I think he gets it done. We're going Billy Q for the W. I think submission is live here. Minus 160 for Billy Q. Zalal at plus 140. Interesting, the under is plus 200. I don't know. We'll pay attention to props later on in the week. Right now, just straight down the line. Billy Q's the pick. I definitely could see it end up going long with use of Zalal. He's not an easy guy to sub up. I'll officially call a Billy Q decision, but I don't hate the idea of submission, especially if he puts a heavy pace on Zalal and is consistent with takedowns. We're going with Billy Q to get the win, and I don't think the lines are too bad for a longtime vet at minus 160. At open, what do we have? Minus 300 at open. Then it was down to minus 140. You better get on that action now if you're betting Billy Q money line. Because I'm telling you, that line is going to widen up to Billy Q probably closer to what he opened that. Billy Q for the win. Next fight on the card, Peyton Talbot versus Cameron Simon. Mm, I'm going with the hype train. I'm going with Peyton Talbot over Cameron Simon. I like to stand up a lot. I think he's impressive. He gives me the Sean O'Malley vibes. The grappling is questionable, though, because he was getting taken down against Aguirre in the debut. But then he had good grappling moments as Aguirre got tired. Cameron Simon, I mean, he put a tough effort in against Rodriguez, and that's where he took his first L. He does have UFC wins. He beat Terrence Mitchell, who I don't, I don't know how he's in the UFC, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, Mano Martinez, majority decision in a good scrap. And then he beat Steve Coslow in a good scrap as well. And Josh Wang Kim, wow, it was a while back now. Experience in the UFC for sure, but Simon is the younger guy. Talbot, I'm just going to compare him. He's got the Sean O'Malley vibes. I like Peyton Talbot striking a lot. 
I think he's a dangerous fighter. If he can avoid being on his back here, he can do well. The thing about Cameron Simon is like he is pretty sound in the striking department, switches up stances. He's a well-rounded guy. He's got more UFC experience. There are things to like, but I'm going to go with the prospect in Peyton Talbot. I don't know. I think he's got something special about him. He's got a little more punching power too, and I think he can make Cameron Simon pay here. I don't know if I'm going to go out on a whim and pick knockout, but I think Talbot could land a big shot on the chin and put him down. The least rock him. Talbot right now, minus 135, close lines. At open, he was minus 110. It makes sense. Simon plus 115, battle of prospects, over two and a half, minus 210. They're thinking it goes longer. How many KO wins we got for Talbot? We got to double check this. Five KOs, one submission, one decision. And that decision, yeah, the Reyes-Cortez fight. We'll go decision officially here. I think Peyton Talbot rocks Simon once, though. Once or twice. And I think Simon sits in there hard, especially in the first round. But Talbot finds his range and his flow. I think he gets going. And I think he pulls off an impressive win in a battle of prospects. I like the fight. And I like Peyton Talbot to pull it off. Man, they're giving no love to Cameron Simon. He interviews Guru. And then they're like, yo, we're throwing you one of the hottest prospects on the rise right now at bantamweight. Talbot for the W. Next fight on the card, featured bout, Edmund Shabazian versus A.J. Dobson. I am intrigued by this matchup a lot. I'm picking Edmund Shabazian, but he has essentially been a bust of a prospect, right? Ronda Rousey was the manager. The hype was high on Shabazian coming up. He knocks out Brad Tavares quickly. And then his career just takes a spiral left. He loses to Derek Brunson, but looking at it now, that's not a bad loss. Jack Hermanson, not a bad loss. Nazaruddin Amavov, not a bad loss, right? These are savages. Derek Brunson might be in PFL now, but he is still a high pedigree fighter. And you look, win over Dolce Ligambula. Ligambula's kind of mid, but he's pretty jacked and strong. Like, he's a decent guy. And then uh, Anthony Hernandez, who he beat him, but... Shabazian looked good in the striking early and was stopping takedowns. Like early in the fight, you can even hear the commentary saying, this is the best Shabazian has ever looked. When he's on point, he's nasty. Dobson on the other side, debuts against Jacob Malhoun, loses. Next fight against Armin Petrosian, who's another Armenian kickboxer like Shabazian. I think with less snap than Shabazian, he loses that fight. And then last time out, he beat Tefan Chukwi. But Chukwi is like stuck in the mud with his footwork, unfortunately. I'm going Edmund Shabazian. I got to pick knockout. I got to go Shabazian KO. I'm going to have faith that Extreme Couture is doing right by Shabazian and he can stop AJ Dobson's takedowns. If AJ Dobson beats Edmund Shabazian, I'm telling you it's over. And it's not that AJ Dobson's bad, right? It's just the fact that the potential, what we saw early on from Shabazian, it looked like he was going to be a world-class contender. Like, you dig back. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this, right? Okay. Brad Tavares knockout. He did what Israel Adesanya could not do, which is knock out Brad Tavares. And he did it with ease. AJ Dobson's a guy that he can beat. Dobson's got good athleticism. He's got solid wrestling. His boxing is decent. He's got quick enough hands, but he's definitely less technical. He's definitely less pre precise. And I think he lacks the snap on his shots like Shabazian. If Shabazian can get comfortable here, I'm telling you, he can do damage. I can see body kicks landing, straight shots. And I think there's a chance that Shabazian gets a KO in this fight. Uh, but I wouldn't go chase a knockout. We'll see what the prop drops at. As of right now, we don't have the props. Over two and a half, minus 135. I would like to see a Shabazian finish, but definitely not crazy. He's a little more on the cautious side, and he wins a technical decision. Minus 185 Shabazian, plus 160 for A.J. Dobson. We're going with the side of Shabazian to win. We're going to have a little faith going with the ginger, too. We got to go with the Armenian ginger. Okay, I got faith that he's coming back and he's putting some wins together. I still think at 26, Shabazian has a bright future. Look at that. The prospect, I guess, technically here would be A.J. Dobson because, you know, 7-2 and two is a pro, but he's 32. Shabazian, we're talking about how many guys he's been in there against at the high levels, and he's 26. Like, you look at his four losses now, as time has passed, they've aged really well. I'm going Shabazian for the win. I'm calling a knockout, but... Don't be shocked if he goes distance and wins. Could be a little gun shy too after some losses, but Shabazian, I'm telling you, he's going to come back better and win. Co-main event of the evening, 
Carl Williams versus Justin Taffa. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going with Justin Taffa to win, okay? We need a heavy-handed savage from uh, Australia to get a knockout. We saw Tai Tuivasa take an L this past Saturday, unfortunate. I think Justin Taffa could knock Carl Williams out. Carl Williams is a good chain wrestler and he's athletic, but he's not dominant from top position, like in the facet of he's beating your face and he's not doing a lot of damage. He's taking people down. He's garnering a bit of control time. They're getting back up to the feet and he's looking to do it again. If he gets caught striking with Justin Taffa, it's going to take one shot. And I know Justin Taffa is unproven against guys that can land takedowns. Absolutely true. But I have a little faith that Justin Taffa with that six foot frame and being 265 at one point missing weight over 266 frame is going to be able to catch Carl Williams. I think he can hurt him with punches. Justin Taffa's striking is dangerous as hell. Obviously, a la Mark Hunt style. Carl Williams is going to be looking to chain wrestle. He's going to be looking to put Taffa down early. But if he fails a takedown, he is going to get crumbled by a big punch. Justin Taffa, 1,000% can knock him out if they're striking. I question if Carl Williams can submit Taffa on the mat. It might have to be three hard rounds of Carl Williams embracing the grind and wrestling. Taffa was supposed to fight Rogerio de Lima. A day out, he gets injured. His brother steps in, and he takes on de Lima and got destroyed. Carl Williams was supposed to be fighting Junior Taffa here. Justin stepped in for his brother, the same as his brother did for him. I think that's pretty badass. And now Justin Taffa is a dog? After he was scheduled to fight against de Lima, and he was getting love. People were picking him, even though I thought de Lima would beat him because it, it was too much of a step up. Carl Williams has not shown to be... Super well-rounded. He doesn't have that UFC experience. I think Carl Williams is a dead man in the striking. The only way he wins is if he is diving on legs from the get-go. He's got to get this fight to the ground. Striking, he's getting chin. I'm going Taffa to flat line KO him. Justin Taffa for the knockout. I'm picking him over, over Carl Williams. I'm picking him here. Taffa is the underdog. Plus 184. Opened up at plus 210. So he opened as the dog too. Minus 214. For Carl Williams, I'm going with Taffa. Let's see what the odds are. Under one and a half, plus 135. That's dangerous zone. Just straight Taffa underdog money. I think he can get the knockout. If Carl Williams is to win, it's probably going later. It's probably Carl Williams getting his hand raised on the judges' scorecards, chain wrestling, pressuring with takedowns. There's no crowd because we're at the apex, but people booing at their homes and being very disappointed. We want to see... Justin Taffa with the knockout. We want to see a Samoan power KO. I got to see a Western, uh, fucking Western Australia. We, we need to see a Brisbane Australia guy get a win. We need to see the Aussies pull it off. After Tai Tuivasa lost, I need a savage KO. I need Justin Taffa right that wrong. And I think he's going to do it for us. I'm going Justin Taffa to chin Carl Williams. Williams might have the wrestling, but he does not have the jujitsu, and he does not have the top control. I'm going Taffa. I'm going knockout. I'm having faith. We're going for the dog. Taffa by KO. Let's get it. Main event of the evening. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you smash the likes. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Amanda Hebas versus Thug Rose Nama Yunus. I'm going with the side of Thug Rose. I believe she's going to get a W, finally. It's been a while. We haven't seen Thug Rose win for almost two and a half years, but it was against the current strawweight champ, Wei Li Zhang, who she has two wins over. She's not far from the title picture at 115, but this fight is at women's flyweight, women's 125. She lost this fight against Carla Esparza, one of the worst fights, if not the worst fight I ever saw. I don't even want to discuss this fight. I'm disgusted by it. She fought Mana Furo and she lost, but she put up a gutsy effort against Mana Furo and she broke her hand like her pinky was absolutely deformed in that fight and she couldn't really throw. So she fought deficient against Furo, who's one of the hottest contenders on the come up and then it's fighting Aaron Blanchfield in the number one contender fight in the next UFC card at Atlantic City. I think Rose Namajunas can work he boss. I think she can avoid grappling. I think she can touch her up with strikes. I don't know. I'm having a feeling like Thug Rose is going to have one of those memorable comeback wins. I think she can knock Amanda Hebas out. Amanda Hebas is very good. 
We got to say that straight up. Like last time out, she went back down to 115 and she beat Luana Pinero, who's a decent prospect. Before that, she got stopped by Macy Barber in an epic war. That loss aged well. Macy Barber just beat Caitlin Sermonara. And then fight before that beat Viviani Arujo, who's legit at 125. And then uh, lost to Sermonara, competitive split decision. She even landed a throw on the much bigger girl. So not a bad loss there, right? The loss aged well. And then fight before that beat Verna Jen Judova. Not a bad W at all at women's 115. This is a battle right here between top women's strawweights at women's flyweight. I'm interested to see in the future if Thug Rose would consider dropping back down or if this is a permanent move to 125 pounds. Either way, when Thug Rose is on, she is one of the best female fighters of all time. And I think Thug Rose Namajunas is going to come back here. I think she's going to have a breakout performance. If mentally she's right, she can toy with Hibas on the feet. She can do serious damage with the striking. When she's on point, she's incredibly fast and precise with her stand-up. She also has a well-tooled ground game. I can't see Hibas easily landing takedowns on Nami Yunus. I think Nami Yunus can do a lot of damage here. I think there's a chance of a Thug Rose knockout. Now, if Thug Rose is a little concerned, we could see a calculated Thug Rose who's fighting more conservatively win a hard-fought five-round decision. That wouldn't blow my mind. I don't know, but something's whispering that Thug Rose is coming back with a KO. We saw Hibas get knocked out too against uh, Marina Rodriguez down at 115. And Thug Rose is a lot more smooth with the stand-up and has more pop than Marina Rodriguez, who's a good striker for sure. Thug Rose is getting this thing. I'm going Thug Rose. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a whim. I'm going knockout. Thug Rose bounces back, and she's back in the title picture at really whatever weight class she wants. The odds for the fight, Thug Rose, minus 180. Amanda Hibas, plus 155. Rose Namajunas should be the favorite in this fight. These lines are perfectly lined up. I'm going Thug Rose for the win. I think she's pulling it off. I think she beats Amanda Hibas, and I think she's back in title contention. I would like her to consider a drop back down to 115, and I think the open discussion could be laid forth with a title fight. It's possible. I mean, she could even fight... Potentially the Andrade, Marina Rodriguez winner from UFC 300 in a number one contender fight if she has to win one more. But having two wins over the current strawweight champion, if she decides to drop back down, there's a case to be made that she could be fighting for the belt once again. I'm going with Rose Namajunas. I'm going knockout win. I got her beating Amanda Hibas in this UFC Vegas 89 main event. And breaking down this card, I'm a lot more excited for it than I was just glancing at it last week. Actually going in depth, there's some good fights. There's some good fights, and I'm excited. UFC Vegas 89, bringing the heat. I'll be bringing the heat too, all right? I'll have the fight companion back. I'll be back in studio, so you guys will see me soon. I'm going back uh, Wednesday, you'll see me back home. Much love, my people. I hope you guys enjoyed the Mike Finch fight companion as well for these uh, UFC Vegas 88 fights. Vegas 88, it was a landmine of a card. I'm going to quickly talk about 88 for just a second. The absolute landmine of a card. We got to talk about it for like just a moment. We'll do one minute about it. Obviously, Tai Tuivasa lost in the main event. He took an L. Throughout the thing, what was my record on it? We got, I think it was 6-6-1. Six, six, and one. My goodness, terrible record. Lost with uh, Gregorio and Helliger got a competitive win. Won with Moises in the second fight. Lost with McKenna over Amarim. I should have just went with the jiu-jitsu. Damn. Lost with Kula Bale on a split to Danny Silva. Uh, Filio destroyed Osborne, which was expected. Chelsea Chandler, good underdog call there. Beat Josiana Nunes. Mike Davis, high confidence. Destroyed Levy, subbed him up. Mearshart subbed Barbarena up. Perfect call. Chiasson beat Kianzad, called it. Robbery, the lock of the week took the L with Rodriguez getting it done on a controversial decision over Dolgarian. It is what it is. Dolgarian was just not that guy. And Zechiku drops the ball against OSP. And then uh, Brian Battle Lusa is a no contest. And then Tibera strangles Tai Tuivasa, which was really sad. Yeah, we'll double check the record one last time. All right, there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, six wins. Six losses, one draw. My goodness, that's a shysty record. I don't like that at all. I'm bringing heat even more for this Vegas 89 card. I feel better about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Much love, my people. Thank you guys for watching. Smash the likes and let me know in the comments what you thought of the picks. If you got nothing to say, we just enjoy the content as always. Drop a W in the chat to boost the algorithm for your boy. Much love, my people, and I'll see you all in the next one.
Peace.